This is the lecture corresponding to chapter 10, sections 4, 5, and 6 of the book of Cummings and Kaufman. In section 4, we're going to see sunspots. The sunspots are dark points on the surface of the earth. They tend to either be isolated or form groups, like in this uh, picture. And they help us, um, because they move as the sun rotates, they help us determine the rotation of the sun. The size of them are tend to be about 10,000 kilometers, and they last anywhere between hours and months. This is a typical sunspot, and this is a typical sunspots group. In this video, we're going to see what are Sunspots are a really sunspots. interesting phenomenon on the, on the uh, sun. They're areas of strong magnetic field, and magnetic field is probably the most interesting aspect of physics that we're going to get out, out of the sun. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have said that because there's also nuclear physics at the core. But at least for my research, the magnetic field is the most interesting thing. And how that magnetic field is generated, how it evolves, how it, uh, it changes with time, and the, the kinds of physical processes that occur in the magnetic field are what we're interested in, and the, the sunspot is, is right there at the surface. What we're seeing there is the, uh, the effect of the magnetic field on the, the photosphere. Now, what we're pretty sure is happening is that the magnetic field is reducing the effectiveness of convection, the transfer of energy from below the atmosphere to the top of the atmosphere. And what happens is the magnetic field reduces the convection, makes it so that sunspot's not so hot, so it looks cooler, so it looks dark. Now, that sunspot is actually hot. It's 4,000 degrees instead of 5,000 degrees. But it's like looking at a faint light bulb next to a bright light bulb. The faint light bulb doesn't look bright just because the bright light bulb is there. You take the bright light bulb away, the faint light bulb looks bright. Sunspots are the same way. It's surrounded by hotter material, so it looks dark. But if you took the hotter material away, it would still be bright. Continuing, we see that um, the sunspots are a recurring, recurring cycle. Here we have in this chart, we have the number of sunspots. It goes from 0 to 300 in a given year. This is the date. And we can see that, uh, that are the number of sunspots increases and decreases in a periodic fashion. Sometimes we have more. Sometimes we have less, but um, the time between peaks tends to be pretty constant, about um, 11 years. And um, we have a region here in which there was a minimum. And before that, there was uh, there's no data. As uh, This is when Galileo began using telescopes to study the, the sunspots. Down here, we have um, the same type of picture between 85 and the, the year 2015, 16, I think it was, 17 was the last one. And we can see that uh, the number of uh, sunspots increases and then decreases and keeps on oscillating. Here we have a, a picture from 1979 that shows uh, a number, a large number of uh, sunspots, including a, a group here. And 10 years later, we see the same face of the, the sun with um, it's a clean surface with no sunspots. So this shows you that uh, sunspots are not a permanent feature of the surface of the sun, but uh, they appear and disappear. We have um, a picture from January 2017, about a year ago. And we have uh, uh, an image from um, uh, what I what it was the current image at the beginning of uh, the previous semester in, in uh, August 29, 2017. There's only one, uh, uh, well, actually two more here, three so, uh, spun sunspots that are visible. 
This uh, shows the rotation of the of the sun. We have uh, the same face of the sun shown at different dates. And you can see that it goes from November the 9th all the way to the 19th. And we can see that it goes from having almost a, a clean face to beginning to show some spots. Here they grow, form a big group that moves around and keeps on moving around. So this tells you what is the rotation of the sun as it revolves over its own axis and it turns out that is uh, the sun is not a rigid body not all the points on the surface of the sun move at the same um, rotational speed uh, near the equator it takes about 25 days to complete a cycle a complete cir circle whereas the near near the poles uh, it, it happens the same complete rotation happens in 35 days here shows the distribution of sunspots on the surface of the Earth. The sunspots appearing on the equator would be plotted along this line, whereas sun, uh, sunspots located, uh, say, between 0 and 30 degrees north and 0 and 30 degrees south appear here. The color represents the number of sunspots that appear uh, in uh, every unit here in, in the date axis is a 10-year period. So we can see that most of the sunspots appear to be um, between the, um, the equator and 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south. There are almost no sunspots near the, any of the two poles. And this is known as the butterfly uh, diagram because it looks like the wings of a butterfly. And uh, we can see that um, it, uh, it, it has to do with motion, with production, around the center of the of the sun we we, we know that uh, the sunspots are created because of um, uh, variations of the magnetic field in the sun and we know this uh, thanks to a quantum mechanical effect known as the Seaman effect the light that is produced by by the sun is produced by the motion of electric charges and these are the electric charges that um, are in the uh, atoms, uh, like for instance of hydrogen, which is the main component of, uh, of the sun. It turns out that uh, the light that is produced by hydrogen under normal circumstances would be just a single frequency, single line, and we're going to talk about that more in coming lectures. But um, if, whenever there is a magnetic field, what is a single line gets split into uh, different lines showing the presence of the magnetic field. We can see that, um, for instance, light coming from this side, outside the, the sunspot, corresponds to this frequency. And light coming from here, which is inside of the sunspot, is divided in three, showing that here we have a strong magnetic field, whereas here we do not have a magnetic field. The same um, out here. So there are magnetic fields, they affect uh, the light coming and produce the sunspots. So why is that uh, magnetic fields do that? Well, the magnetic fields tend to expel the charges outside the, the region. So whenever there is a strong magnetic field, this effect takes place, but at the same time, the charges tend to be reduced. They are pushed outside. So th there is less activity here than uh, outside the, the sunspot. So we have less light. And how is that that happens? Well, that happens because of the motion of the, of um, the mass of the gases uh, on the in the sun. This uh, the study of this that motion is known as uh, helioseismology, and it's a, stu a study of the so-called vibrations of the, of the of the gas on the sun, and. Um, here we have a computer simulation which, that shows that uh, the regions in blue uh, represent gas coming out to the surface. The regions in red represent gas going into the sun. And we also have here the um, uh, different representation that it has to do with uh, the different variations in the, in the motion of the, of the particles. So it is this motion that um, makes um, 
the changes in the magnetic field that produce the sunspots. This uh, picture represents the sun at different stages as it rotates. And if initially we have a um, magnetic field that extends from, say, north to south, which this would be the normal loop for a magnetic field, well, as the sun rotates, the part in the center gets pushed to the right, whereas the part near the pole gets pushed less because of the rotation. Here the rotation is 25 days uh, for a complete loop, where here is 35 days. So because of that, the um, magnetic field gets distorted in the following way. And as time goes on, it rotates more and more, uh, forming this uh, web of magnetic fields that eventually snap and begin to produce this type of effects that instead of uh, continuing the line all the way from north to south they go from one point to the next and they produce this type of uh, of magnetic field where this is the so south and this is the north which means that the gases that are being pushed outside will feel this strong magnetic field and they will rotate this way so these pictures were taken by uh, UV images, ultraviolet images, and um, we see that these are the so-called, we're going to see that later, the coronal loops that, that move up from the surface of the, of the sun, about 160,000 kilometers or 100,000 miles. And they, the gases that are moving here are moving extremely fast at about 60 miles per second. This is another video that shows uh, precisely how those fields are inside of the, of the surface of the, of the sun and how they come out and form these loops. At the very end, we could see a mission of mass. Well, that motion of um, gases, depending on the magnitude, can be categorized as the plages, filaments, prominences, flares. They also produce the opposite, which are the coronal holes, which is a lack of uh, brightness. And of course, the, the mother of all effects, the coronal mass ejection. The plages tend to be bright areas. Those are the bright areas. This is before the loop, the magnetic loop forms and the mass begins to come out of the surface of the, the sun. The filaments are these uh, ruptures that uh, represent um, lack of um, uh, emission of light. The prominences are these uh, hairy things that come out but do not are not ejected, are not em emitted, do not come out of the sun. The flares they do escape from the sun, and which that would be uh, much larger prominences. And the coronal mass ejection are the most massive chunks of gas that come out. The coronal holes are on the opposite dark areas in which uh, we have. Uh, uh, escape routes for the solar gases. This would be uh, prominence here coming out. This would be a mass ejection. And of course, we are looking at the sun and this is coming out sideways. So there's, there was no danger when this chunk of gas came out, was no, no danger to the earth. In other words, it didn't come our way. This shows a coronal hole, which is a region of lower density and lower temperature, and um, it has less emission of light. Uh, flare, you can see the flares here, 
they are also appearing on this part, but we don't see them. We see only the ones that are uh, perpendicular to us. And the, those flares are produced um, because of uh, the creation of two uh, sunspots. We have a sunspot, an old one formed there, and a new one being formed here. When that happens, these two, the two fields from the two uh, sunspots pinch the matter in between and make it, um, they push it up and they come out of the surface. At solar maximum, there are about uh, 1,100 uh, flares per year, and they last about an hour. In this video, we're going to see some uh, uh, pictures taken of the activity of the sun. You can see that there are some gas escaping, a lot of flares always present, some prominences being formed. The mother of all the eruptions of gases are the coronal mass ejection that are, are just extremely large chunks of gas that come out. This is an X-ray image taken by the satellite, the SOHO. And the, the mass that is coming out is equivalent to these many millions, 1.4 million um, kilometers an hour. This is the speed. And uh, the amount of mass is 2 trillion tons of um, mass. A ton is 1,000 um, kilograms. So we're talking about a major amount of, of gas. What happens to that mass when it comes out? Well, it turns out that uh, the space is not freely, is not free from forces. Once the day the gas comes out, it will feel a magnetic field, a very extended magnetic field produced by the sun. So those gases will tend to align along those uh, lines, magnetic field lines, and follow those trajectories. And the gas that is moving there, it also produces um, radiation in the form of radio waves and that radiation uh, comes out in all directions and we can detect part of it and by Doppler we can see whether the gas that emitted that radiation was moving away or towards us and by that effect we, we are able to map these uh, uh, magnetic field lines but what happens if they come uh, we're, we see here Mercury, Venus, and Earth. What happens with all of that gas when it reaches us? Well, here we have the wind, the solar wind coming our way. This would be the Earth. The Earth has its own magnetic field that interacts with the solar magnetic field and distorts its shape. So the magnetic field of the Earth is uh, not, all, not only around the Earth like it is expected from a magnet, it is distorted in that direction. So because of that, when the uh, solar um, gases come out, they feel this uh, magnetic field of the Earth, and they are moved or directed by the, this magnetic field to the poles of, uh, of the Earth. And um, we have satellites moving around, so those satellites that are uh, out there can be affected by this uh, by the gas and can disrupt radio communications and power transmission lines. It can damage the satellites also. Um, in 2014, there was a, a, the largest sus sunspot in the 25 years, and during those two week. Uh, those two weeks of uh, transit, there were 36 power, powerful solar flares that came to us. And they, when they reached the poles, they produce uh, massive aur auroras. Uh, the auroras is basically the solar wind uh, interacting with the magnetic field of the Earth. And the magnetic field makes the, those particles in the solar wind 
move around and by moving they produce light. That light is uh, very impressive, it's what is known as the Aurora Borealis. So I'm going to show just a little bit of this uh, film because it's longer than we need.
Well, we close the section with this uh, cartoon. It says that um, after reading that the sun loses 600 million tons every second, this uh, person is extremely worried and is asking the wife, uh, is the sun still out there? Yes, it is. How does it look? The same. <laughs> and that's it for these uh, sections four, five, and six.